Hey everybody, Pastor D here in this horrendous Houston traffic again. And I want to come to share some tidbits with you concerning singing. Um, I consider myself somebody who's pretty well versed in music and in praise and worship. Not so much uh, vocally as much as script scripturally. Um, I've done exhaustive studies in the scriptures concerning music and praise and worship. But this particular video is more on the vocal side. Uh, again, I don't consider myself a vocal coach or anything of that sort. I can give some advice and I'd like to do somewhat that today concerning singing because a lot of people have asked me about my singing. I've been doing this for about 30 of my almost 40 years now and have always, since I can remember, have studied the likes of Commission, um, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Daryl Coley, Kim Burrell, Rance Allen, the list goes on and on. John P. Keith. There's just so many greats who have paved the way for us um, as singers, as artists, or whatever you want to call yourself. But I want to give you maybe three or four tips on singing, whether it's leading or background. The first thing is nobody can teach you how to hear. Hearing cannot be taught. Hearing, what I mean by that is being able to hear something, to retain it, and be able to give it back, to be able to hear a note and sing in that note. So if you're one of those type of people where you can't really, you can't hold a note in the bucket, um, there's not a lot of advice for you. Uh, but a lot of us who have the natural gift of being able to hear something, retain it, regurgitate it, and perfect it, first you must understand that that's a gift. Everybody doesn't, everybody doesn't have that ability. Um, if you have that, congratulations. You're able to go to the next part. Uh, I want to talk to you about um, your vocal ability. I want you to know that runs, doing a whole lot of runs and vocal acrobatics is not the most important part of singing. Um, I guess you can call it, it's a cherry on the top when it's placed well. Um, which means you can't spend a whole song doing a whole bunch of runs showboating your vocal ability, but they have to be placed tastefully uh, within the content of your song. That's another video uh, that we could talk about how to lead and where, you know, placement when it comes to runs and vocal acrobatics. Uh, but I want you to know first that that's not the most important part of singing. You know, there's a whole bunch of other elements that are so important. Um, you have to be able uh, to have good tone, vibrato, and having placement even with those type of things. But let me tell you this, for those who may be intimidated by others who do a lot of runs and vocal acrobatics, um, that's not the most important part of singing. This is how I wanna encourage you. I wanna tell you, as a singer, you must know your ability. Number one, know what you're able to do and do it well. What gives thumbs up for a great vocal presentation is not how many runs you could do, but it's making sure that what you do, you do it well, which means it's not necessarily adding to your presentation, just don't take away from it. In other words, just don't mess it up. Um, if you want where you, you thrive off of good tone and people who thrive off of good tone and they have good movement in the song, a lot of people, the best way we can explain it as singers and musicians is you gotta feel it. You gotta feel it. And if you don't understand that, um, praise them. But anyway, um, you have to feel it. So don't be intimidated by people who do a lot of a lot of vocal stuff, man. Know what you can do and perfect it. Perfect the quality of what you can add to the song, what you can contribute to communicating the melodious structures of that song. Um, the second thing I want to tell you is stage presence makes a big difference. Um, Stage presence is so huge where even if you do have a mistake, and we all make mistakes, um, if you make a mistake, the average person won't notice it if you have the ability to keep your composure. You don't make a lot of faces like, ugh, that didn't sound good. You don't look at people strange and draw too much attention to yourself. But when you have the ability to have stage presence, what is stage presence? Stage presence is having the ability to not only communicate the song vocally, but giving the people something to see. Don't mean putting on a show, it's just making sure that you exude confidence when you sing a song. 
Um, that's the third part I wanted to mention to you is confidence. You got to have confidence in what you do. That's why practice and rehearsal is, is so key, man. It's so pivotal. Um, if you want to be a singer, you have to practice the material to the point uh, where you can learn it. There's so many different practices um, and things you could put in place to make you a better learner of music. Uh, one of the big challenges that I have right now was well, not a challenge, but it's a yeah, it's a challenge. It's a challenge is uh, singing for an, uh, an artist such as Kirk Carr. Um, sometimes you may get the music three days before you have to sing it. You don't know the song. Uh, and so there presents a challenge for you to have to learn that in a short span of time. And when you do that a lot, you do, you begin to develop some habits and some practices um, that help you. That goes back to my first point. Singing is, I'd like to say, 70% um, mental and 30% vocal. You need to know that. You need to understand that. Singing is not all vocal. Because you can have a voice that'll make Christ stand up off his throne. But if you don't have the ability to remember placement, notes, lyrics, movements, changes, tempos, singing is 70% mental, man. And if you are serious about doing this uh, for a living or recording or you know live or if you just want to uh, uh, increase your ability to sing when it comes to live. You got to make sure that you're mentally prepared um, to take on the challenge. Um, so I think I gave you about three or four uh, different key points. But the last thing is um, on top of having the vocal ability, on top of knowing what you can do, on top of having stage presence, on top of remembering lyrics and changes, the fourth and the most important part, especially for those of us who sing in the kingdom and do it for a church and praise and worship is the anointing. That's the element that cannot be tossed, taught rather, and the anointing cannot be rehearsed. The anointing cannot be purchased. The anointing is given through living and through a lifestyle of dedication um, to the Lord, through praying, uh, through fasting sometimes. Now, let me tell you this. When you have the anointing, sometimes it will make up for having a lack of some of the other three things that I mentioned. When you have the anointing, I have had opportunities where I've sang and I have forgotten the lyric. It happens to everybody. It has happened. But when you have the anointing, the hand of God can fall on you and assist you in that moment. Or maybe you'll sing something that's not the lyric that was written by the author of the song, but it'll still make sense for the song. And when the anointing moves, um, nobody else has to know that you messed up. Same thing with stage presence oftentimes, sometimes, sometimes, because I don't want us spiritualists to take the anointing um, and use it as a crutch for the lack of preparation and the lack of professionality. Uh, but the anointing uh, will help you in those areas where you lack sometimes. And so I want you to know that if you are serious about singing, if you're serious about using your gift to take you to the next plateau, to the next level, uh, let me throw one more thing in for free. Um, commitment. Commitment. You got to be committed. Um, I sang all my life in church. Uh, and most of the time I did it for free. Why did I do it for free? Uh, because I enjoyed doing it. And more importantly, I did it as unto the Lord. Are there people who took advantage of me? Yes, but I didn't allow them to make me better. It helped me with my future decisions, with working with some of them, um, and how I handle business. But make sure that you are committed and you never let the trials and the, the tribulations of life that are meant to strengthen you, never let those trials uh, make you bitter or bad at handling business. Um, but you gotta be faithful somewhere. What does that mean? You have to dedicate yourself somewhere. I like to suggest this to a church or to a ministry that you believe that God sent you to. And when God sent you to that ministry, um, be faithful, serve, do what is asked of you, as long as it's within the parameters of your powers and of your availability, but serve. Everybody should be faithful somewhere where they give. And when I say give, I'm not just talking about monetarily. 
um, or, 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 or of your possessions. Give up yourself because when you are faithful over a few things, God's word says he will make you ruler uh, over many. Everybody should give of themselves somewhere. And all of my years uh, of ministering, of singing, of traveling with my band, even the years that included when I pastored, um, I never had the money to pay musicians full time. I could pay them sometimes. And there are people that would take advantage of you. There are artists and singers, pastors, and promoters that would take advantage of you. They've, you know, some have, have taken advantage of me, uh, but I've always kept my heart to God be the glory. But let me tell you this. Um, I've always had musicians around me who had a standard, but because of our covenant relationship, they gave to my ministry. They played and didn't charge me at all or didn't charge me as much as they charged the next fella or because of my integrity. And I was honest with them up front. I told them I can't afford to pay you for this, but I'm asking you if you can come and serve. Um, let me tell you, preachers and singers and promoters, musicians appreciate you when you tell them the truth up front. And sometimes they may give you a no, don't take it personal because you don't know what people's personal needs are as a singer, as a musician. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into preparing to minister, to perform, whatever you want to call it, practice, which means sometimes you have to pull yourself away from your personal family, uh, from some pleasures and accoutrements that you normally would enjoy otherwise, and you have to go somewhere, lock yourself in a room like I do and study. And since I've been doing this, I like to say professionally, um, about 11 years ago when I had a chance to sing on a live recording through a major record label, I locked myself away in my hotel room and I practiced the song until I couldn't stand it anymore. And I did that on purpose because when a singer is comfortable, um, you can stretch out and be creative. But you can't always be creative if you lack in that area of comfort with the song that you're singing. What makes you comfortable is preparation. I like to say over preparation. So these are just some things that I wanted to share with you all that I've learned through my many years, man, of doing this. I'm still learning and I'm still growing and still being challenged in new ways, which I love because it helps me grow and perfect my gift. But I want to share these little um, tidbits with you. Um, take them to heart. Make sure you keep constant prayer um, a part of your regimen, man, because prayer is necessary. You don't want to become bitter because everybody will. Um, have the opportunity to be taken advantage of or used or whatnot. And, you know, you got to remember God gave you this gift to be a blessing to the world. So see, see the better and the bigger picture other than the people that take advantage of you. Because if somebody take advantage of you financially, um, but you were able to be a blessing to somebody in the midst of it spiritually, because using your gift saved somebody's life. And I have had people that come and testify and say that my ministry saved their life to God be the glory because they were getting ready to take their lives hours away from that. Um, that's the greater good. And that was the greater payment for me in that situation. Remember what Jesus says when his disciples came and wanted him to withdraw himself from the woman at the well. Jesus says, um, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his course. So this is not me saying a video, uh, posting a video that's saying it's okay to be taken advantage of and let them use you. This is me saying sometimes um, your payment is not monetarily and it's not physical. But if you be faithful over a few things, I'm a witness, he'll make you ruler over many. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. And I believe that there's a remnant of people who still have God in their hearts and still mean well. They want to be in God's will. And I assure you that God will take care of you. God bless you all. Signing out.